This has got to be the top five tips to recording pro vocals from home. I'd start by upgrading to a $3,000 microphone. So if we haven't met, I'm Jordan Eastler with My Audio Academy, and today I'm giving you my fail-proof methods to get those professional studio quality vocal recordings from your house. Almost all, if not all, of these methods are completely free, and if you stick to the end, I'll be sure to throw in some tips and tricks and potentially throw in some free stuff. Let's go. First thing that we gotta talk about is acoustics. You ultimately wanna be able to find or create a space in your room that's the most dead. That's not what I meant. Dead meaning positioning your mic in a way to eliminate the risk of your microphone picking up reflections or reverb within your room. I know behind me you see all of this, you know, fancy recording equipment and stuff like that, but before all of this stuff, I did start in my room as well. And my favorite place, the most cost-effective place for you to be able to start to find that dead space in your room is probably going to be your closet. Your closet probably already has some heavy hoodies or just kind of heavy clothing. And what that does is it absorbs all of that sound reflection so obviously, I mean, an extreme example is if you go into your bathroom and you clap, you're gonna hear the echo, the reverb, compared to if you go in your closet, you've got all the clothes and you clap, it's gonna be a lot more dead and contained. Now, if you don't have a closet or you've got a little bit of money to invest, the next upgrade option, I would probably recommend grabbing some sound panels. You know, there's all kinds of YouTube videos out there on how to create budget-friendly sound panels. You could hang some of these or you could get some foam panels and hang them in the corner of your room, kind of stick the microphone in the corner of your room with these sound Sound panels that way your vocal recording doesn't have a lot of the room noise the reverb and the reflections from your room point number two let's talk about the mic placement so there's a few things that we can talk about here but let's make it very simple so the first thing is obviously the hey where do I place the mic in front of my singer I like to put the top of the mic right at the top of your singers top lip that's a great starting point that typically works in most scenarios I think another thing worth mentioning in this portion of the video is how close or how far away your vocalist is to the mic mic greatly impacts the vocal recording. So if you're right up onto the microphone, you're going to get a lot more intimate and a lot more rich, a lot more full sounding vocal. Or if you start to kind of pull your vocalist back from the microphone, it's not going to necessarily be as rich as full, but it may work if you've got a vocalist that's going to be kind of belting out loud vocals. This is going to kind of help you prevent the vocals from distorting. Whenever you get really close to the microphone, there's a term called proximity effect. There's countless videos explaining that here on YouTube, all kinds of blogs. That's something you may want to check out too if you want to learn a little bit more about how close or how far away you are from your microphone really affects the vocal recording. My most common setting is getting your client right up on the pop filter whenever they're recording and the pop filter is something that we'll cover in the next point which we'll get to here shortly. And just a quick hack this is something that I picked up from a friend of mine an incredible Grammy award-winning audio engineer Kevin McCluskey so shout out to my guy. If you got a vocalist that has a really bright vocal or maybe your microphone is just a naturally bright microphone phone you know there's a little bit of high end it makes it sound a little bit too unnatural what you can do is you can actually tilt your microphone downward and what that does is it kind of rolls off the high end just a little bit kind of creating a more natural vocal without having to go out and buy another microphone which is always a plus on the come up so tip number three we got to talk about the pop filter if you don't know what a pop filter is this is what it looks like like how I magically revealed that thing Let's go ahead and jump into my vocal booth so that I can show you exactly how to set it up. All right, so now that we're in the vocal booth, let's quickly break down exactly how to set up your pop filter. Your microphone may not be hanging upside down. We're gonna treat it the exact same way. Basically, all you do, you have your pop filter connected to your mic stand, and then you will have the pop filter kind of gooseneck in front of your microphone here. And the distance that I like to kind of keep my pop filter, I like to put my fist in between the microphone and the pop filter. That's that's probably the perfect amount of distance for me. That gives me a nice intimate sound. It prevents the plosive, the P and the B words from getting into your signal and ultimately giving you a nice professional recording signal whenever you're recording your vocals. Don't go break the bank. You don't need the most expensive pop filter. This is one of the more cheap pop filters that you can get and it gets the job done. Point number four, we gotta talk about setting these recording levels. Easily the number one mistake that I see 99% of beginning audio engineers make is recording their vocals too hot. You've probably seen it, you've been recording, and your things start blinking red. That's 
not good. If you're recording vocals to a pre-mixed instrumental or beat, this beat is likely very loud, which is great whenever you're playing it back on your phone, but it's not so great whenever you try to record your vocals on top of it. The easy fix, the easy solution, we gotta turn down our beat. Ultimately what I do is I turn down the instrumental by negative seven decibels. That way I'm not having to turn my preamp so loud, the little gain knob on your interface. I'm not having to turn that up so loud, which greatly decreases my chances of of distorting or clipping my vocal recordings because if you do this there's no way to fix that whenever you're trying to mix your vocals no! so let me show you how I would set my gain don't laugh at me this is literally my very first interface that I ever got there's no chance they make this thing anymore but it functions very similar to any type of common interface instead of cranking my gain knob way too loud I like to start maybe about nine o'clock. That may be a little too low or it may be a little too loud depending on how you record your vocals. But what I'll do is I'll kind of keep my finger on the gain knob on my interface and dial it until my signal is right at about the green, maybe even getting kind of close to the yellow signal within my fader. Ultimately, what we don't want to have is we never, ever, ever want our vocals getting up even close to the red. It's going to be clipping. And like I mentioned earlier, there's no coming back from that. If your vocalist is dynamic, aka they're quiet and they're loud i'm gonna probably get them to give me a practice take of their most loud spot that way i can dial back that gain knob to prevent the risk of distorting their vocals if you've been getting some value you're growing your confidence go ahead and hit that subscribe button i promise you we're going to give you all the tips and tricks hacks all the trainings and tutorials to help you grow as an audio engineer on the come up and if you're a pro tools user and you're just getting started we've recently just created a completely free 30 plus page pdf guide this would go hand in hand with the training that you're watching right now to help make learning Pro Tools simple. Yes, I said learning Pro Tools should be simple, easy. So tip number five, use recording templates. If you don't, you're having to pull up all kinds of plugins. You're having to make all kinds of different adjustments, which ultimately starts to diminish your creativity. So the ultimate goal is to have some sort of system or template to help you get from point A to point Z fast. So 100% of my personal recording sessions always start with some sort of basic recording template, which in my world as a recording engineer makes my clients happy. <laughs> yeah, boy. Now, if you're in Pro Tools, we've definitely got a few Pro Tools templates that you can utilize. Some of them's free, some of them's paid. You can find all of those in the link down in the description. If you're not in Pro Tools, I'm sure you can find some online. I would just make sure whoever created them has a sound that you do like. So hopefully you're okay with a couple bonuses here. Rapid fire. Bonus number one, practice or warm up your vocals before recording. Or maybe just kind of practice or recite your lyrics a few times before you actually start recording. It makes a night and day difference. Bonus number two, leverage punching in vocal takes. You don't have to go all the way through your verse or all the way through your hook and definitely not all the way through the song in one take. I typically get better vocal takes whenever the verse and the hook is kind of broken down into smaller portions. That's really going to help you stay fresh and help you really deliver the money take every single line, every single bar of your song. If you start implementing these techniques, your quality will improve without spending any money. Like I mentioned earlier, if this added any value to you, I would recommend hitting that subscribe button. And also down in the description is all the free resources, all the other valuable resources that we mentioned throughout the video. So if you haven't yet, go check those out. I think they will be super beneficial to you on your journey as becoming an audio engineer. We'll catch you here soon. This is Jordan with my Audio Academy and I'm getting out of here. Peace.